that tube in his nose to be using for feeding came out. He started walking. He's gone back to his accounting job like I said he would. On the 14th of June, exactly last year, my son was admitted to hospital with sickle cell crisis. Due to poor care in the hospital, my son became so badly ill that he ended up in coma. He was in coma for a very long time. You know, they, they diagnosed him of extensive brain stem damage. That is what controls your breathing, your blood pressure, your walking, your talking, your memory. In fact, that is the, the the seat of life in your brain they said it was extensively damaged so this boy was transferred from Queen's Hospital to Homerton Hospital for a specialist treatment that is a very uncommon treatment the consultant did it once which they normally do just once but for God to prove that it was him and only him who did this miracle the consultant decided to do it twice this boy still wouldn't wake up and he called me to his office on the 6th of July last year to tell me that the son of my Montel would either not get up from the coma or when he go gets out of the coma he's going to be in a vegetative state he cannot walk he cannot talk he won't eat as soon as I started hearing those negativities I started screaming on top of my voice I reject it in the name of Jesus my son will wake up from the coma he will walk he will Talk. No brain, no brain law and memory loss. He will go back to his, his accounting job. The doctor was looking at me. All the consultants, you could tell that they were full of pity for me. I said, God, please glorify yourself because the consultant has said that nothing will make him happier than to hear all of these things that I'm prophesying come to life. I said, Jehovah will do it. Every time I have a negative testimony, I used to have my mask, my facial mask. I wrote, what God cannot do does not exist. And I will write amen at my chin. So when the doctor gives me the negative report, I ask him, doctor, can you read what I've written here? <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Initially, the voice was gone. They thought that was another thing God couldn't do. I told them, before that treatment you are saying you are going to do to my son, before that day, his voice is going to break forth. Like play, like play. Hey, the boy started talking. The tube in his nose to be using for feeding came out. He started walking. He's gone back to his accounting job like I said he would. The power of the communion, please. Don't joke with the communion. I took this boy's picture and I was feeding it with communion every day when we have our prayer sessions. I was declaring life into this boy. I took his shirt and I'll bring it to the fire altar every morning. And when I go to the hospital, I place it on his chest. Please, do you know that whenever I place the shirt on the boy's chest, the boy reacts? The boy in coma used to react. Oh, we've got something so powerful. What our God cannot do. Amy Brimer and um, during the fasting and prayer in February I was having abdominal pain so I had to um, go to my GP to complain about this my GP told me to do some tests so I did a feet test and a stool test so on getting the reports it came as a bowel cancer uh, and um, they tried to call me and um, I've noticed anytime they try to call on a Sunday it's um, a bad news but um, when I got the the reports all I did was because I had watched a testimony I don't miss my testimonies I don't miss the testimonies I don't miss the Holy Communion so I got um, when, when I got um, I was on the testimony I, I listened I saw a lady she gave a testimony something similar she was just dancing so when 
I got the report, I started to dance. I said, what God cannot do does not exist. What the enemy has planned will not happen. I will not die. I will not be buried and I will not bury. So on the, on the 13th, I was told to go for a test at the hospital near me. And the same day, the 13th of February, Pastor Daddy mentioned my case and he said, every bowel cancer is reversed. So I claimed it. So when I went to the hospital, I did a test. On getting the result, they told me the test was not clear, that I had to come back. I said, no, what God cannot do does not exist. So I went back to my GP. I told them, I said, I am not going back for that test because I know the Lord has done it for me. So I said, I want you to redo the first initial test you did for me. When they did the test, everything was clear. There wasn't any trace at all. What God cannot do, God cannot do. Hallelujah. I am that woman God has shown mercy. And the man, that was me. I, I was sick. I woke up in the morning. My eye was full with blood. I started coughing up. I said, what is this? And then I rushed to the hospital. They took my blood and they asked me to go back home for tomorrow I will come for the result. As I came back home in the morning, we're doing our NSPPD. The doctors started calling me. Before they called me, Pastor Jerry said that you have thrombocyte, that God has revised it. I don't know who you are, but all I hear is the vein thrombosis. All I hear is the vein thrombosis. The vein thrombosis. If you are the one putting on the live stream, by the power that raised Jesus from the dead with the decree and declare let it be reversed right now I say amen and then there's call me that is a, it's a life threatening something that I should come immediately to the hospital I reached there they collect my blood again and check my there for 8 hours they started checking they couldn't find anything hey. Hey. hallelujah and then they say that you are the same person that was here yesterday. I say yes. They check. They say it was numerous, but now they cannot find anything. I say, but God have answered me. What God cannot do does not. Do. What God cannot do. I am that woman that God has shown mercy, enormous mercy. Last July, I was rushed to the hospital because it was later that I discovered this anyway of brain hemorrhage. I slipped into coma. I was in coma for some time, like about two weeks. Uh, I had surgery. When I woke up, uh, I couldn't, there was no coherence in my speech. The, I couldn't recognize anybody. I couldn't walk. I, nothing. Everything is like, I'm there. And they were giving my family, they said it's 3% of people that survive it. And out of that 3%, uh, so a certain percentage will remain vegetable and so on and so forth. But one day, my siblings, they came to the hospital, they brought and played, they said, they, I was told, they played the, uh, God showed me mercy uh, uh, into my ears. Then that was the time I started waking up from coma. When I was taking that back to the, the world, when I was taken out of ICU, one day I said, I want to listen to, because they took my phone. I said, there is a program that I need to join. I needed to join this program. I, after I disturbed them a long while, they gave me my phone. So every morning I would log in into it. So one morning, Pastor Jerry said, we should take communion, you know, after the prayer. So the communion, you know, they would say we have to kneel down after a certain point. At that point, I couldn't turn. I couldn't do nothing. And I said to God, if you will allow me to walk out of this place with my two legs, I will forever worship you. I will forever praise your name. And that is the time that I started receiving my healing. And the doctor came one day and they said, what is this doing here? The catheter, they should remove it. This, they should remove it. They should remove that. And here I am today. I am talking. I am walking. I can talk. I can do everything they said I cannot do. What? that God showed mercy. I, 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 I went to Abuja in January, tw uh, January 2022, but I joined this platform in August, August 2021. I was actually pushed to come to the altar 
fire altar. And in January 22, I was I was taking palliative chemotherapy, but I went to Abuja just for a week and then came back. When I came back, they said the cancer has spread to my liver, my kidney, my everything, my spleen, everything. Hey. So because I came back from Abuja, I said I'm not continuing the treatment. They said, they told me, oh, you won't have much time and all the rest of it. I said, no, I'm not taking treatment. And the reason why I said I'm not taking treatment, when I came back, I went to the oncology meeting. They said, oh, we are starting this new treatment. On my right hand side, I heard Pastor Jerry say, why do you want to take this? Why? You don't need it. You don't need it. So I said to them, no, I don't want it. So, but I, I said, I don't, I'm not ready. I did not just sweep I said, I'm not ready. Can I go home and then prepare myself? Home is Sierra Leone. So I went home last year. When I was going, they said, I should do blood every two weeks. I used to go and do blood every two weeks, which cost $100. But this time around, whilst I was at the receptionist at Ecomed, they said, they, it went up to $150 equivalent. And the same voice, Pastor Jerry, why do you want to pay this money for to get negative news you don't need it so I ran out of the receptionist office and then went home I was in Sierra Leone for five months I used to have uh, two weekly magnesium infusion because pain everywhere and I was but then I was 54 kg and uh, since I ran out of that test center no pain no nothing no nothing no in April they did CT scan and I saw I went there on the on the 20th I saw the oncology team on the 20th then the voice told me to ask them to print out my results they printed it out right I did not bring my reading glasses but please help me read to this if you can see liver pancreas adrenal glands all normal the kidneys are normal no change is seen what Woman. My journey began with NSVPD in 2021 when I wanted to commit suicide because I was so tired of life. Whatever thing I do, it doesn't work. It will work fine, but in the middle, everything will just scatter. I keep trying. I work hard, but I can see what I'm working for. I cried. I said, the last time I went for an interview in the uh, uh, U.S. Embassy, they denied me. That was the day I said, let me just leave this world. Because my boss took gave me his copy profile, everything. If it's money, the money was there. I don't know why they would deny me visa. Then I have not recognized the altar of fire. But my friends were telling me, oh, some something is wrong. Come to the altar of fire. So that fateful day, 24th of July, 2021, I opened my phone and I said, it is my time and my turn. When I saw the topic, I cried. I said, what? This is what I've been missing all this while. And affliction has held me back. On 2022, I was praying on the altar of fire. The Holy Spirit said, go to Abuja. I booked a flight immediately. July 10th, 2022, I went to Abuja. It was my first time. So on the third service, as I was coming in, the usher said, are you just coming? I said, yes. And he took me straight to the back of Papa. And I sat down. I said, yes. God has remembered me. I said, yes, God has remembered me. So that said today, Papa was preaching. And Papa said, I want a sister here. I want to use it for an illustration. A sister came out. Papa said, no, go back. I will use it for next time. Another sister came out. Papa said, no. The next thing the Holy Spirit said, that is you. I stood up from here was standing. I went to the altar of fire. When I rushed out to the altar, Papa helped me. When Papa helped me, immediately. Immediately, what I saw Papa in my dream uh, delivering me, half of physical. Papa was pretty, illustrating. I was holding my hand. The woman was afflicted. Uh, yet, yes. Oh, and God said, uh, This one not the daughter of Abraham that's been afflicted uh, for 18 years. Uh, I was shaking. I was shaking. I was shaking. Papa left the preaching. Papa left the preaching. I said, No, this is your carousel. This is your carousel. Come on to deliver you. 
Sister, I can call. I need a sister. Oh, sister, sister, I will be needing you. Um, so can you just go back? Let me need another sister. Let me get another sister. Let me get another sister. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Just a sister. Just a sister. And I want you to realize that what happened was that Jesus saw that this woman had the spirit of infirmity for 18 years am i communicating and jesus realized that i could easily send the spirit of infirmity out of this woman but i'm going to try something different the preceding verse before this and when jesus saw her he called her to him now and said unto her woman thou art loosed from thine infirmity that is whatever spirit of infirmity that has been holding i don't know why you're here but this might just be your kairos moment whatever it is that is not of the lord in your life live right now Kopata. Because you are not returning back the same way you came. Let her go. She has a destiny to fulfill. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. Repart her. Her deliverance has come. Her deliverance has come. Repart her. I decree it is done in the name of Jesus. I was the person, Papa conducted deliverance on, the, on Sunday in Abuja there. Today see me. Today see me. And I went back to because I was in Lagos then. And I flew back to Lagos. And Papa visited me in the dream again. And I was in church where Papa called. If you know you want to travel out of this country, come out. And we rushed out to the altar. He asked the pastors to pray for us. As the pastors, we are praying for us. And I asked the pastor that prayed for me. I said, sorry, pastor, what is your name? And she said, Grace. I don't know her. I said, Grace. I was walking down from the altar. I met Papa in that dream. I said, Papa, I want to travel. I want to travel. Papa, just look at me and smile. And I went back to my seat. Papa came back with a box and gave it to me. Thank you for consistency. Go. God is going with you. Everything that was hanging started falling in place. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. That is how I got my visa. I came into this country with 300 pounds and have not paid school fees. But today, God has been blessing me. I have paid my tuition fee. God opened doors for me. God loved me. God showed me 